I was just trying to give you all a dramatic pause. <laughs> Wish yet. <laughs> If you care. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's me. It's Wendy. I am so glad to be back with you. Um, fresh week of shows. Fresh shows. Love it. Love it. Love it. The, you know what? Please. I'm all backed up. I'm going to have diarrhea of the mouth today. I just know I am. There's no point in teasing you guys as to what is going to be happening on the show today. Because we could go anywhere with this machine. But I will tell you this. A legend who I used to have a deep seated crush on is coming in this studio today. And I mean, I used to be hot for him <laughs> until I got the memo. <laughs> and I'm not even sure that's certifiable. I'll be observing everything about this mother father today. <laughs> All kind of body language and whatnot. <laughs> It's safe to say my crush is over, <laughs> but it'll be nice to speak with him. Anyway, all right, you guys, uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm ready to serve up the dish and whatnot, so uh, keep it where you got it as long as you can. Uh, it is what it is. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. This is the Wendy Williams Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Oh, yeah, open up the gates, open up the gates. <laughs> Can you tell I missed you? <laughs> Oh, that is not a that is not a knot of money in my pants pocket. I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Feeling all sassy and rested. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. I hope you all enjoyed the best of shows. Um, Trev Hollywood worked real hard on them as king of all production for the Wendy Williams. All right, as the only production for the Wendy Williams experience. I mean, Art, as producer, knows how to do everything, but he just more delegates, I think, or something. Hi, Artie. How are you? You look good. Thank you. You look very good. Thank you. <laughs> I sat out in the sun despite what my dermatologist says. Oh. It only happens once in a while. You know what I mean? You are dark. Yeah, well, we had a nice time. Did a lot of beach laying, a lot of drinking. Oh. It was just me, honey, and the chief. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, it was on. All right. Yep. So anyway, um, what's going on around here, man? Listen, um, the show is going to be the show as usual today. Nothing has changed. Vacation wasn't about brainstorming. What are we going to do on the show to make it different? I mean, it evolves right before you. It is what it is, man. <laughs> um, but there's this woman. Next hour for Advice Hour. I've already got her facts. I'm so going to address this. Um, she says that she has an issue, not a problem. She's been with this brother for four years. And he's the Mac Daddy. He bought her a house. And between the two of them, they have a nice six-figure salary. And recently, his son came to live with them at the house he bought her. And there and lies the issue, not problem. An issue. So we'll talk about that during Advice Hour. Plus, guess who's coming up here? Sweet Daddy Larry Blackman. Oh. And I don't know which button you should press. So for now, just hold the, just do the applause. Because there's going to be a whole lot going on. The, the how you doing, the drill. No. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, honey. All I know is back when Larry Blackman was doing it with, um, with Cameo. First of all, I had no dar, so didn't know what that was. All I remember is the cup that he would feature inside of his leggings. <laughs> and when I think about that look right now, I'm saying, oh, no, I wasn't the original Star Jones before Star Jones was thinking about being Star. <laughs> but then again, you know what? That was the look from back in the day. Because Rick James was doing it. The only thing about Rick is that, you know, his, the, the sweatiness and the hair and all like that. Larry Blackman with that thick village people mustache. Ow. And his hair was so neat and quaffed all up high like Slim Jim. Ow. Yeah, I'm saying. And his leggings. He wore leggings before we girls even knew what to do with them. Ow. And then he'd throw that cup. And he wouldn't even wear the cup inside the leggings to, you know, enlarge his manhood. He would wear it on the outside of the leggings. And it was red. And it was red. Ow. Exactly. <laughs> so, 
and you know those tight muscle shirts and stuff. And I was all stupid in Ocean Township. I didn't know what I was looking at. I thought that was hot, man. <laughs> so I've never met the man. It's like you know, you know, he came up on the on the ideas of guests for the show. I was like, yes, because at least I can either close my case and put that where back there, yeah. or. Put that where? Or I report did. to you guys that my daughter was totally, you know, no, there is nothing. He was just going with the style and, you know, and I, like that. Yeah. yeah, Bobby Brown do it, too. Bobby Brown did it, too, and there's nothing. I don't I don't look at Bobby Brown uh, cockeyed. But just keep the drill, oh. you know, just because, you know, what happens with the legends sometimes. Yeah. You know, they have legendary teeth, too. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting a bright smile smile from my dentist uh, on March 5th. I can't wait. Yeah, I just started speaking of teeth. You don't really need one, though. Yeah, but now I'm the overall brown. Do you see how nice my teeth, they look next, nice and white next to my... They look whiter now than they did before I left, right? That's the tan. A real tan, not tan from a brush like I normally do. You know, brush a tan and stuff. Mm. But I'm thinking of getting a... And I'm not going to accept my dentist because I went once before to a different dentist and the dentist said, um, you can only go up a shade whiter. It'd be a waste. It's like 650 bucks, you know what I mean? But it lasts for like eight, nine months. So he was like, it'd be a waste. And I appreciated the dentist for his honesty, but I left, you know, with my money mad. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't care if my teeth look fakely white. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't understand what kind of job I do. There you go. We corner people so much with their teeth, you know. Now I'm feeling pressure from my own, you know, to do something. Yeah. And I don't just look at my teeth from the front anymore now because we've got the drill. Now we got the jackhammer on the yeah. show. I take this, the mirror. Do you look at your teeth from the side to see if maybe you're busting off a few, you know, hidden licorice in the sides of your teeth so when you smile, the, the cavities are all back in your molars? Because, see, everything could look great with these final five right up in the front or seven or however. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that side shot... Sometimes that could be the deaf you. I saw a picture of Johnny Depp over the weekend. Why is this man missing a molar in the back of his mouth? <laughs> On top of it, he looks like he never takes a shower. He just looks downright stink. Mm. I haven't thought Johnny Depp was hot since um, Jump Street. And even then, I liked the Asian man, and I thought Richard Grieco was hot to death. Richard Grieco on Jump Street? But my absolute favorite, Pinhaw. Dom DeLuise's son, Peter DeLuise. Oh. Uh, but you know what? That kind of figures. Because there was a lot of hotness on 21 Jump Street. But why do I like the dumpy guy? <laughs> Kevin James. You know what I mean? It's the whole thing. How did that do with the movies? He stole the show from Will Smith. He stole it. But it was a good movie. Number one at the box office all across the board. Yeah. Carl Thomas, a shout out to you. This is the last time I'm going to mention your, sh your name on today's show. Because the next time I'm referencing you, I'm going to do it in blind item fashion. Okay. So there, there. I didn't even get a Tourette's moment. I just talked and now... You'll know. <laughs> you know, when I tell you I have a blind item today, I'll refer back to this break right here. Uh -oh. I feel good. You look good. Thanks. Well rested. Thanks. I didn't get that much rest. You was walking funny too. Seems like Ooh. every time no, that would that would be that would be the heels. Oh. Yeah, you know, when you're on vacation, you wear flip-flops and barefoot. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you come back, you put on your heels. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Snoop got hit in the head with a bottle over a sea. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what happens. Damn. Mm, well, welcome to the club. People always throwing stuff. I remember my bosses at my old radio station here in New York watched as they dropped the... First, they dropped the curtain on my head, which you read about in my book, with, oh. which was weighted at the bottom on, at Summer Jam. And then, during the same... Uh, when I lifted the curtain, you know, like an idiot, to try to get from under the curtain, not thinking there would be a boss at the helm of dropping the damn curtain on my oh. damn head in front of thousands of people at Madison Dam Square Garden. You know? But I walk out there, and then people, uh, somebody threw uh, like a like a Diet Coke or something with the ice in it. They missed me, but the point is, is that it was it had my name on it. Yeah. You know. And then the same boss, you know, you know, I stayed out there because I'm a trooper. You know, I go out there, I'll face what? Mm. You know what I? I mean, just you know, stuff like that doesn't make me leave. It just makes me, you know, all right. Like, you know, I got a couple extra t-shirts in the car, so we can go into the next party. I got a little splash with some soda, whatever. Hold, Art, hold my hair. Can you please, you know, take it in the. And dry it off and so I can put it back on and, you know, I go on about my business. 
with the idea that a boss is at the helm. Where was I going with that? Oh, Snoop. Oh, yeah, but I'm glad to hear that he's okay. <laughs> did anybody see Corey Feldman on 2020? Does anybody, did anybody watch the Grammys? I didn't watch that much of it. There was a TV where I was. Um, turns out. When I realized I was going to miss Wisteria Lane, I was like, oh, forget it. We got to, you know. Find something. Yeah, better find something. <laughs> I didn't see the Grammys uh, enough, but I saw it enough to say that Alicia Keys had the best hair. She looked so pretty. Her earrings, her hair, just she looked so pretty. Her dress was questionable, but... You know, she she looked great. She just looked great. And, you know, Jamie Foxx, whoever won, Kanye West, congratulations to everybody who won. Did you see her manager beside her? No. Jeff. Oh, that's the one we've been putting the screws to, right? Right. Mm-hmm. All I want is a daddy <laughs> to pitch a ball. Oh. Mm-hmm. Puffy kept the book money. And from Regan Press. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> they stupid enough to give it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Looks kind of cheesy, though, Puff. I do have to say. $300,000 is nothing for a man of your stature. Why, that's a mere one month of child support for one of your babies, mothers. Damn. That's all. I'm on fire. Today is the day I might say one word too many. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Today is that day. I feel it. I don't want anything to eat. I'm starving, but I want to be like a racehorse today. Just run fast because there's a bowl of food at the finish line. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Tonight's the comedy club. Oh, yeah, yeah fried chicken and waffles. Big <laughs> red. Shout out to everybody who's going to be at the Laugh Factory. Hey, keep it here. Brother, he told me he had a very good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Today's R&B and Classic Soul and the Wendy Williams Experience. Howdy, everybody. Uh, let me talk to you about uh, L.A. weight loss. Well, it was nowhere with me on vacation. Therefore, ugh, I got to get back to action. You know, I mean, butter and everything. I'm going to tell you. This commercial is almost a wash because I did nothing. I, I practiced nothing that I learned from L.A. weight loss. I didn't even drink water on vacation. I drank drinks. A blue Malibu, shots of Hennessy. You know, all the everything, everything that you have to mix in a blender for big fat asses like me, who even when we lose weight, we still have fat thoughts. Pina colada, what is that, 500 calories per? I was good for four of them before noontime. Where I'd have a double shot of Hennessy, you know, big ass. And I don't know about you, and I was wearing a two-piece bathing suit. I'm sitting on the beach. I don't care that there's... You know how, like, when you're sitting in something, like a bathing suit, and you're on the beach... You're normally not going to chomp down on a cheeseburger. Don't you normally go off to the side someplace and start licking your... I mean, you know what I mean. Beaches, to me, are for French fries with no no ketchup. So you just pick them up daintily. and Not me. Big cow that I am. Oh, no. Chowing down. Double cheese on the burgers. Yes, please. Put ketchup on the burger and then also dunk it in the ketchup that I've splashed on the side of the plate. Bring me some mayonnaise and Russian dressing for my French fries. Nothing about the last five days has been L.A. damn weight loss. However, today is a new day. I'm back with my water. I'm about to order a little tub of tuna. Sorry, Ray. I cannot partake in the fried chicken tonight. Uh, on second thought, that was my vacation mind thinking. I am. I will be eating some steamed cabbage for dinner tonight. He brings that over to the comedy club, too, which I love. Uh, steamed cabbage and hot sauce. Anyway, so that's my L.A. weight loss report. There ain't nothing going on. I'm not even getting on a scale. I'm probably good for two pounds. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. LA Weight Loss Lifestyle. I'll have it off by um, Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my report. I filed it. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for nothing, LA Weight Loss. Oh. I wish I could pack you with me, but that would involve more luggage. <laughs> um, tonight, everybody, is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. Oh, let me give you the telephone number of L.A. Weight Loss, though, because seriously, I did lose over 15 pounds on L.A. Weight Loss, and I, I didn't plan on staying on a diet when you go on vacation. Do you? Hell no. Hell no. I had dessert every night after dinner. Uh, please, please, please. But I'm back, uh, I'm back, you know, to what I learned today. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss, and I got to tell you something. If you're going to watch your weight, roll with the best. It's LA Weight Loss. Really, really. 1-800-448-TRIM. Um, and tonight is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. I will definitely be in the building, um, along with Capone. And, you know, a smattering of people who come every week and then 
lots of people, it's their first time. If you've ever thought about going out by yourself but you're a little too shy, it's a perfect place to test the waters. The comedy starts about quarter to nine. Doors open up at eight o'clock. The drinks, the food, the comedy, you know, the seating is, is great. You sit down, you have your drinks, eat your food, you laugh, we, you hear the jokes, and then we all go home. Isn't that great? And we're all home probably by the second half of the 10 o'clock news, which, by the way, I'm watching the Fox 5 10 o'clock news tonight. Uh, sorry, UPN. You know, unless you can get to the bottom of this story and start teasing it right now, Fox 5 hooked me with one story tease. Because normally I watch the UPN 9, you know, Brenda Blackman, and those are my people over there. What's the white man's name again? Harry Martin. Hi, Harry. Megan Vega. The little Don Shane man who does the Steve Villanueva. I love those people over there. However, this morning, because I start my morning with the Fox News in the morning, I end my day with the Fox News at night. I mean, the UPN News at night. But this morning, guess what the Fox News teased for the 10 o'clock broadcast? <clears throat> there is a surprising witness who is going to testify in the Michael Jackson trial. Oh. And they left it with a cliffhanger this morning that we cannot believe who it's going to be. No. And I believe they said the person is a celebrity and I have got to see it. Now, UPN, unless you can do one better than that, <laughs> start teasing it now and then make sure it's being teased in that t 10 o'clock. Then I'm sorry, I got to go. Just for tonight, I got to go with the Fox 5 News. That tease right there is enough to pull me in for the whole hour. I'll be watching like this, eyes wide open. You know what I mean? Got to see that. Shout out to Sugar from Drag Kings of New York. Oh. How was your uh, lesbian party? Oh, it was fabulous. All right, we don't have time to hear about it now. <laughs> Look, <laughs> let's continue on. This break has been too long, and we'll talk. Uh, I would like to hear about it, though. Please. The girls accept you, you with open legs? No, just open minds. Oh, really? Their legs are open for each other. Yes! <laughs> Clap for yourself. Oh, yeah, That's a good go. one. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody. Keep it here. More shenanigans. Yeah, we're all live back in the studio, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WVLS. How oddly strange. Give me a moment. I'm about to spell my own name wrong. Who is this for? Uh, Charlie Martin on Laboon View Drive in East Patchogue. I just finished signing your book covers. Thank you, sir. He took the covers off his two Wendy Williams books, and he mailed them in, sent a self-addressed envelope. I just signed them. So, Char Charlie, you're about to get those mailed back. Thank you. <clears throat> Shout out to Daniel from the Beauty Supply Shop in Sheltonham. That's in Philly. Shout out to everybody in, in um, Columbia, in South Carolina. I'm going to be down there, not this coming Friday, like two days from now, but the following Friday. I'm hosting a party. i got to get the name of the club and all that other kind of stuff, but I'm going to be in Columbia. What Friday would that be? March 4th. Yep, that's it. That's where I'm there, that Friday night. And I don't know exactly. I, I forgot. I don't have the information. But no matter how the night starts, it better end in a strip club. And then after the strip club, it better end with something greasy and dripping with barbecue sauce in the parking lot. Mm. I love it down there. The visits and stuff. <sighs> Crazy. Um, so anyway, so Hitched over Valentine's weekend did $43.1 million at the box office. Jeez. That's great. Nice. Whitney Houston's new album is going to be coming out soon, everybody. I was looking for Whitney at the Grammys, even though I only watched for about 45 minutes and I was in and out even at that point. You know what I mean? But I was, I kind of missed Whitney at the Grammys, even if it was just a fluttering of her fingers in a dramatic gown sitting at her seat. Just a fluttering of her fingers, I would have been happy. I, nothing. I need that. Hey, Whitney. Well, they say expect a new CD from Whitney by the end of this year. And she's um, still with Clive Davis, her mentor. And they say they're back, going back in the studio the last week of March or the first week of April. With Whitney, you got to plan it, you know. Wait, hold up. <laughs> that means you don't know me, you've been in my house. You, you don't see me. There you, you go, Whitney. Watch, watch what you say. Watch what the F you say. My niece is uh, flying up this weekend, and my sister's coming with her. And you know that at some point over the weekend, our weekend-long pajama party is going to consist of, let's put in Whitney Houston's primetime. Wanda, you pop the popcorn. Alex, get the drinks. 
I'll quiet that kid down upstairs. You know what I mean? Mm. And when I say drinks, I mean like Kool-Aid. You all, my niece is like 14. Anyway, so great. So Whitney's going to have new music out by the end of the year, and I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. Nice. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Dave. All right. Attack me with your love, oh, baby. baby. Ow. Now, if you were any kind of producer, you know you'd have the music ready today. Just, you know, give me some of that. And don't play candy. That gets too played. Don't, don't, don't. Too much. This is with a music bed. No, I don't want to hear that. I don't care about hearing something with a music bed. I want to hear something with Larry Blackman's manly voice okay. in a cup and leggings. Right, here and possibly the drill on the side. Okay. <laughs> Look, um, is anybody in the office right now, Nicole? Okay. All hands on deck. Who's ever listening around the radio station to the show? Can somebody please know something besides this, too? I know this is. Now, yeah, no, these are the commercial cuts. You don't understand. I was a fan. I was like listening to the underground cuts. You mean rigor mortis? Oh. Oh, there you go. There you go. And you don't stop. Oh. Ow. I'll slay you, bitch. Oh, no. Could you guys picture him saying that? That thick mustache? You gotta give him save the day. I'm going to get him to say all kinds of stuff today because I'm going to be giving him all kinds of tests he's not going to even know about. I'm observing him from every angle. Though you will not mess with me, crush. I got like four crushes from the past that are just straight up. Ooh. How you do in. And I'm like, damn, I had no dar back in the day. <laughs> Tell me what's the word. Yeah, this right here. This is hot. This is the music bed we'll use when we talk to him. There you go. Yeah, I was prepared for you. Oh, wang girl. Every time he says that, is he going to say anything in this? Oh, yeah, it's, it's just a long intro. Yeah, no, I like this. You just keep this playing right now. Get me all pumped up. Larry Blackman's coming in today, everybody. It's not that many people that I ever ogled or, you know, cared about in the music world as far as, like, looking at them, like, hot and stuff like that. Because I was always like, shut up with the music. Let me hear, you know, Frankie Crocker talk or, you know, my radio legends and stuff. I was into this even back in the day. But the Larry Blackman... As as people go, he was one of those people for me. Like, oh my gosh, boom, 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 boom. By the way, we were talking about Corey Haim the other day. Oh, oh he's fat. The only part of him that you would recognize is that bottom DS lip. Yeah, oh yeah. Of which I don't know anybody's D that want to get serviced by his ass oh, at that no. particular point. Yeah, he's a mess. His hair is over bleached. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's sparse. He's only thirty three, but he looks a mess, all bloated and stuff. I never had a crush on him like that, but, you know, just thinking about it. You're in rare form today. Is this 1990 or what? I don't know. It's 90, I'm just having a good time today. I'm glad to be here. Sometimes I need that for my rejuvenation. Oh, my gosh. You know, we just did a break about nothing. I wanted to talk about Michael Jackson, Billy D. Williams. We'll get back into Puffy and all like that. Keep it here, everybody. Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get your book. That book is fire! <laughs> yeah, honey, you did it again, honey. You did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can bring the man in. I don't even want to <clears throat> get in any other conversation. It's so rare that, I mean, you know, I love when friends in my head come in, but that's a whole different category than, you know, somebody that, you know, I had it for back in the day. Oh, my God, he hasn't changed. Hello, my love. Hello. How are you, John? Hi. <laughs> you look and feel fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So do you. I was looking at those pictures. And... Yeah, watch that. Okay. okay. I see nothing gay going on here in the room. I'm okay. just going to say it because, <laughs> you know, back in the day, let me just say, it's Larry Blackman, everybody. I had such a crush on you and all you did. Attack me with your love, baby. She's strange and I like it and all that stuff. Now, I don't know how old you are, okay. but I would guess mid 50s except for if you're 55 then you're 55 oh, the new 42 you break my heart no are you you're not that old no oh, okay no, no. 
I'm not going to tell you. I'm, I'm not going to ask. You don't grease in okay. your hair because you got a few grays. Art is more gray late than you. 40s, and he's made. You look fabulous. Thank you, love. Thank you. I would not recognize you as Larry Blackman. If I'm trying to figure out what I recognize you know, but I'd say, is that who's, who's our director friend? Daniel. Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels. Why do I know that Monsters name? Ball. Monsters Ball. Monsters no, he, he's Ball. He's fabulous. Uh-huh. Okay. You're very handsome. Thank you, love. And well preserved. Thank you very much. And look at your mustache, all the thickness of back in the day. <laughs> and I stopped cutting my hair, so you know I don't. I, don't I really love it's it. unkempt. I love it like that. It reflects my inner self. And he's wearing <laughs> leather jeans, not leather leggings, with a cup on the outside. Wow. Yes. All I'm right, wait, pull thing. up, pull up. Everybody, get comfortable. Okay. All right. It's Larry Blackman here, the man behind the production of Bobby Brown's first solo CD. That's right. Make this man a junior Larry Blackman. Who better to call to do the job than Larry Blackman? That's right. We had a bunch of fun, too. Now, except for my prerogative, that was Teddy Riley. Right, that was after. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. That was after the first CD. I produced his first Everything. record and uh, directed his first video. Now uh, we see where Bobby mm-hmm. gets it. Yeah, Bobby's Bobby's a great guy. I mean, yeah. it's hard to know him and not love him. Yeah. Gosh, you look great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Don't you look great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Have you gotten a facelift or anything? Oh no. I'm sorry. Botox? Nothing. Oh. Nothing. All natural. You know, some of the listeners, it's funny, when I said you were coming up, I got some faxes from some people. Some people yeah. saw you up in Canada recently. Oh, yeah, so in Ottawa, Toronto, or some Back in October, places. somebody mm-hmm. saw you in concert, and they said that you all are still just doing the damn thing. Oh, we, I mean, we were in the uh, Mohegan Sun just, uh, I think, about four weeks ago, five weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Throw look, it up. D- look, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, are Snoop and Pharrell singing over a cameo, uh, She's Strange? Several. Okay, okay, there you go. Uh, <laughs> pull up that song. I'm trying to figure it I was trying to think yeah. off the top of my head. I'm the, she blows my mind. That's you. Yeah, That's you. yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of, uh, he, he uses a couple of verses in uh, She's Strange and some other things, you know. And unfortunately, I mean, right, right before Tupac passed away, he had recorded a bunch of my stuff also. Yeah, this is She's Strange. Yeah. I knew this was my joint on the down low. Yeah. How much do you charge for a sample? I, oh, that varies. Uh, Thirty to fifty. Well, yeah, it to depends. It, it's so, there's so many variables involved in that. Yeah. Kind of thing. If we're talking shop, I mean, you know, yeah. Your teeth are gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you, love. I'm just gonna say that out right now because we got a thing. We do a whole thing on the show. We smoke our guests over. I okay. was looking at you with all kind of eyes in my head. I, I can tell. In, in my head, <laughs> when I was telling everybody you were coming, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna be watching this. I'm gonna be looking at yeah. that because you know." That's me. This is all me, baby. Are you? Still a multimillionaire? Uh, I'd say I'm a almost multimillionaire. Okay. Okay. And you've got your health. And that's more important than anything else. Yes, it is. How many children do you have? Larry Blackman, oh, everybody. Okay. How many children do I have? Uh, Uh-oh. Let's see. I have five children. Okay. Mm-hmm. Three by my ex-marriage. And, uh, and, and, and two from? Adults. Adults. And how long were you married? Oh, about five, six years. Because that's all that I could probably take of you. You're out there swiveling your hips. Was that during the cameo days? Oh, yes. Indeed. Oh, please. I'm oh, surprised yes. she even oh, married yes. you. Oh, oh, yes. I got married actually after the second album. I think what happened was I was a little disappointed about the upfront sales and I needed something to give some excitement to my life. Yeah. But you know, those things happen because they're destined. You yes, know that. yes. They don't happen just because, you know. What type of girl does Larry Blackman in his career prime, and I don't mean to take anything away from what you're doing right now, oh, I, we're going to talk not. about the no, cameo we enjoy CD. Being underground. However, what kind of woman does Larry at his prime marry? A little, well, a little chippy. Was, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. But she was. I mean, you know, there are other things that causes people to bond. But uh, Drugs? she was. Uh, no, no. Okay. That would have been all right too during that time. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you had to fight the habit. <laughs> hey, listen, also, everybody has to break the habit. <laughs> all right. I'm sure there's several habits, you know. Hello. <laughs> you can drink too much water and kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, moving right along. But uh, yes, uh, she was a uh, graduate of uh, Talladega. Uh, um, in uh, Alabama, English uh-huh. major, uh-huh. and uh, a jazz enthusiast. And uh, how did you meet was, her? Uh, you know, where we met, you would not believe, one block away from this building. What? Between Park right and Madison. She That's was walking correct. down the street? This is at the time I building my career. I was doing some telemarketing. And, yeah. uh, and we saw each other from about 30 feet away, and immediately both of us started smiling. Okay, wait, question. Weird. 
<clears throat> your first album didn't do so well, so you still had to supplement your income by having a regular job. You were a telemarketer? Uh, actually, it was right before the first album. Our first single had been released. Okay. okay. What single was that? Uh, Rig and Mortis. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh hit that mm -hmm. up. We have that That's in the... Right. Yes, Mr. Blackman. 40,000 copies in two weeks, love. I was working at a clothing store on Wall Street mm -hmm. at the time, okay. you know what I mean? And uh, it came on the radio, and I was filling a, a client, decided to see. I asked one of the other associates to uh, take care of him, and left and never looked back. Right. Wow. And so you meet this? It was on the world premiere. Of Frankie Crocker show, yep, on WVLS. I, I, yeah, when I heard that, I knew it was yeah. going to be played 12 times a day. Yeah, so I yeah, just yeah. I knew it was yeah. there, you know? Thank God. Wow. Thank you. God bless you. Absolutely. Soul. And, uh, so yeah. now, how long does a woman date Larry Blackman before you say, "Do you can you marry me?" You know, it's a weird or kind of you? thing. We were soulmates. She was the only woman I'd ever met that did transcendental meditation. Uh, oh, we boy. were intellectuals. Uh, I think there was a lot of reasons. I know that that was meant to happen for whatever so, reason. And so then, um, did you have your other two children after your marriage, or or during it, or before? Uh, during the marriage, I'll uh, jump uh, off. But first, there was a son. Okay. Uh, um, no, we were married at that time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she was pregnant when we got married. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then uh, there were two more daughters after that. How old is your oldest now? My oldest right now is 34. Wow, that must 30, be so cool. No, I'm sorry. Don't, he's going to kill me. I'm uh, 32. Cool ass dad. Here he comes. Yeah. And look how he shows oh, up. Listen, the sunglasses, the I have the better pro. time. My son is right, one of my sons is, um, right out there, right outside. There. He was on BLS just this week on some debate. Uh, he's in the politics. He's oh. vice president with the New York Jets. Your son? Yes. He ran uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign here in... Uh, Look at Larry Blackman. Manhattan. That's right. I turn him out, baby. So I hear. Can I help, can I help you? You guys don't enjoy. It is so nice. I mean, you're doing well. You got your own career going yes. on. Contrary you don't look. Belief. You don't look crazy, pot-bellied, wrinkled, bald, no, toothless, and all that. Oh, look, no. I've I've seen from from your time, and oh, really? I know what I've talked with well, when and you say been. My time. When is that? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Your time is always, because you're always working. I know yeah. bands like Cameo and Earth, Wind & Fire, you always work. Mm -hmm. But I would say the Cameo time was, uh, what is that old Davey boy? We're somewhere in the same ballpark of age. Like 78, 79 around. No, you're, you're out of your mind. No, not at all. No, so he's still busy. The first the release was about 80. 78 and 79, the first release. I that was, was trying My Way, which is a disco song that bombed. Okay, and then we asked the company to take a listen to our original material. Okay, okay, the funk. Yeah, it's a baby. And so I, re to me, cameo is like like eighty one to eighty six, just like hot mm -hmm. and popping. Or yeah. did I short yeah, you? Eight to ninety two, maybe. Ninety two. Yeah, my ninety two. Yeah, yeah. How, real men wear black. I think. Was candy, that. best man. How much money did you make from that? Candy. That, uh, for that, from that particular. One? Yeah. Oh God, I, you know that's a good question. I look back and see, but we made some, we made some money from that. Like one. like several uh, uh, several oh, hundred yeah, thousands tens. of dollars. A thousand. Tens of thousands. Yeah. See, I don't know. That's why I said several hundred uh, thousands. Okay, yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah, and then, you know, the way it comes, uh, you have to look a little deeper to split it up. And okay. Say exactly. Who do you have to split it with? Uh, when you split it up as far as the income, when it comes, all yeah. of the different things that you Your know, manager you've done. and... No, I'm not talking about okay. that. I'm talking about the uh, sources of income. Okay. Candy was one song. Okay. There were several different songs. Yeah. And during any particular time period, uh, you might receive royalties for uh, several songs. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. That's how it is, baby. So how do you live? Uh, you, you live in Hollywood? Larry oh, Blackman's no. here, everybody. Oh, no. Where not do you Hollywood. live? I live several places, but I spend most of my time in, in, in Atlanta right now. Uh-huh. And, uh, they have a big yeah. spread there? Uh, I did the big spread thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and when you live alone, it's just not a convenient situation. Gotcha. You know gotcha. What I mean? mm -hmm. And plus, I move around so much. It's better to have smaller places and more cities than yeah. it is to have one big place yeah. or several big places. Are you in love? Am I in love? Yeah, you're I'm wearing a ring on love. your on your finger. Oh no, that's that's just for me, baby. That, that, that's for me there. But that's no, I'm I'm in love all the time. I'm in love with life, people, and that kind of thing. Am I involved in a romantic relationship yes. at the moment? No. When's the last time you had sex? Oh, oh. I, hey, listen, I could be honest. About two nights ago. Oh. Did you buy that? Did you just buy? That? Well, buy you, you know what I mean? It's a cheap woman that you I. saw that you saw in a club. No. And you, have friends. Okay. Yes. We, uh, just we, a friend with benefits. Uh, a friend, you know, they're friends that you have friends for quite a while. You know what I mean? And they're just good friends. And it's much safer, yes, I might yeah. say, than, than to be, you know, sampling. Uh, yeah. Walking down the street going, mm, I'd like to try that out. No. Can I see what's in your pockets? Oh. Can you see what's in my pockets? Please. Let me see what's in my pockets. All right, here he goes. Very much in my pockets. All right, uh, it's Larry Blackman. No, actually, I just came off a flight and uh, he's got uh, eye wash. Eye wash. And. 
70 something cents. All right. Oh, now. Oh, that's, it. that's it. That's it. That's it. Well, mainly because they make you take your, your things out your pockets right. when you go through security. Yes. And uh, so I haven't refilled my pockets yet with all the other junk that I normally carry. Yeah. Do you carry one of those man purses? You know, they're very uh, very European. No. You're a man no, of the world. I did world. that already. Yeah, I figured you did. I did that back in the early 70s. Yeah, man. Yeah, with, <laughs> with the high heel shoes and the jumpsuits and the bags from Toronto. So and you had our shoes made up there, too. You all are celebrating 30 years in the business, Cameo. Coming up. All 30. the original guys? Oh, yes. With the exception of uh, one, Dwayne Cooper. God bless his soul. Was it something Wayne was, Cooper. Uh, what he, happened? He, he passed away some time ago. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he was, he was the one that was that sang tenor, our first tenor. Wait. If he was alive, and he used to sing with Sissy Houston. Really? He was part of the background crew that, that did background sessions in New York City. Yeah. Where are you got? Where are you cats from? New York City. Wow. How did we meet? How did we meet? Actually, I, I had a group called the New York City Players, mm -hmm. and we were playing in uh, Toronto. And met some of the fellas that were playing in other groups, Gwen McRae, yeah, so on and so forth. Right. And uh, so we made a plan to get back together here. I yeah. was rearranging some people in the act. Tommy Jenkins and myself was from the New York area. The other guys were from Michigan. So when we got here, we went to the Daily Planet rehearsal studio, huh. and I had auditions for a cameo. Oh, there you go. And the, the rest, rest was is history. history. Mm -hmm. I can't get over. You've got no chin sag. You got, <laughs> when I hugged you, I felt uh, some firmness. Oh, yes. Well preserved. Very well preserved. Thank you. And you know something? I feel better than I did when I was like 28. Isn't that something, how life does I mean, that to really, you? It's a real mental thing. So how old is your youngest child? My youngest child, my youngest child is, let me see, Lindsay, and then there's the Rhonda. Let's see, my youngest Are child is 17. Are these all by black 17. women? All by black women. Uh, just oh, asking? I know, seriously, all by black women. Wow. Well, and, and that's surprising to me, because one time I started da I stopped dating black women. You made a conscious decision. I made a conscious decision. What is that? We're overbearing, we run your pockets. No, it's just, you know, just, a, just a drama moments, and some of them <laughs> oh, the time, so that's what that Yeah, that's what I mean. No, I'm serious. And, oh, and yeah. sometimes, and you know something? It's not really their fault in most cases. Yeah. You know, it's just how, it took me a long time to learn. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then I started dating them again, understanding a little better. Yes, I yes. was so busy. I, I didn't yes. have time to do an analysis on everybody. Psycho, have, psycho you ever, analysis. have you ever taken Viagra? <laughs> you know, I tried Viagra about a year or so ago. I don't know why they're and laughing. You know what? And a lot of guys pump that stuff. Like, it's just the party thing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, never needed it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. My thing only got hard when I saw something or when I felt something that made right, it hard. Right, right, right. I'd rather right. like that than to be right. walking around like Cialis, you know. <laughs> if, if you're hard over four days, try to see a doctor. We have 30 seconds. When does the Cameo CD come out? And the I... Cameo CD is coming out June, July of this year. June, July. And what's it going to be called? That's, uh, well, we haven't decided yet. We have three well, working damn. titles. Uh, three working titles. Three. Larry Blackman presents. Uh -oh. No, not quite. <laughs> but close, Wendy. Oh, but okay. may I say before I go, so yes. we have 30 seconds. You look gorgeous yourself. Thank this you. Is my, I, this is the first time I've had the pleasure. Thank and, you very much. And I much. just thought the pictures on the wall back there were just like, oh, yeah, okay, these are touch-ups kind Thank of thing. Thank you. I'm serious. Thank you, sir. I've listened to you. Thank you, sir. I, and, and I like the show as well. Thank you very much, sir. No, you're welcome. It's Larry Black. Anytime. Anytime. And please, you know, I'm sure you'll be doing a lot, especially with our radio station here in New York, WBLS. We are today's R&B and classic soul Wonderful. and the Wendy Williams experience. Yeah. So I'll see you around. Oh, you certainly will. Thank you, Mr. Blackman. Thank you, Larry. Uh, All right. I'll see you. It's Wendy, man. Hey, Wendy. Hi. My boyfriend gave himself a wet Susie or whatever. <laughs> he said he almost broke his off. The Wendy Williams experience. You already know It's Wendy with a throwback from way back A Wendy Williams experience A Wendy Williams experience Uh-uh, okay, I got a couple blind items Uh-oh Mm-hmm that blind item, I was like, by the way, that was no uh, BS when Larry Blackman was here. Wow, he still got it. And and young Larry Blackman, the 32-year-old son who's in the executive offices at the Jets, he was in the um, other room, total opposite of his father. His father's in the leather and the black shirt and all like that, and sunglasses inside. The son's got on, you know, like a custom suit and, you know, not pimp style, just regular. You know, he's got the, the corner pocket handkerchief and the whole bit. 
Yeah. Very distinguished. Yeah. There's, you know, it, it, I like to see the legends living well as opposed to just surviving. We need the drill and all kind of other crap going on. That, is, that, was, that was a very pleasant surprise, but I was prepared for anything. All right, I'll get to the blind items in a second. Damn. Did you hear? Well, only, I only have one of them, actually. This one I don't think I need to blind. A little birdie was telling me something about Terrence Trent Howard. First of all, um, yeah. Lackawanna Blues. I know. Huh? Terrence Trent Darby? I said, Terrence Trent Howard, why don't you listen? <laughs> don't press any damn owls on my best supporting acting that's role. My man. That's my man, too. Sorry. I love him. That's Philly. I'm sorry. Is he from Philly? Yeah. I him. love him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hmm. This says, Wendy, I've been waiting for you to drop the bomb on Terrence Trent Howard. Now, first of all, I just heard, heard that he either just A, had a baby, and or B, had a baby and got married. One of the two. But, Wendy, every time you mention Lackawanna Blues, you never mention his little problem. When he's hired for a job, he asks them to remove the television from his hotel room because the man is addicted. Porn? He has a history of running up ridiculous hotel bills and being late and not showing up to the set because of his dependency. I know this because my homegirl works for a production company that hired him. Aside from that, he hits on every woman in the office shamelessly. Well, so there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, now that he's married, there might be a little problem. He'll talk to you many times as if it's your first time you've ever met, and he uses the same tired-ass lines. Well, I mean, the core of Terrence Howard seems like a cornball. But he's good when he gets on there. I'll tell you what, he was good in that Ray movie. He's good in everything I've ever seen him in. Yeah. And he's totally, um, sh oh, enough, enough. <laughs> Shout out to the entire McIntyre Air Force Base. Thank you very much. They are, um, South Carolina, you all are busy, man, today. Um, McIntyre Air Force Base um, apparently is the Air National Guard Station. They all listen over there. Well, good news, because guess what? I'm hosting First Friday in Columbia, South Carolina on Friday, March 4th. Party over here, brown Ooh, juice, champagne, yes. and uh, some ribs in the parking lot afterwards, hopefully. A lot. I'm going to be hosting it at South the South Trust Building in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. It's located on the corner of Jervie and Assembly Streets. You gotta be 21 and older. This is a grown and sexy party brought to you by T Rock and Ricky Belgrave. And the doors open up at 9 o'clock on first Friday, March 4th in Columbia, South Carolina. <clears throat> shout, out, out, uh, shout out to everybody listening. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there. Grown and sexy, please. Thanks. <sighs> Gastineau girls, tens across the board. Let's move on. Hip hop whore names names. Don't you love that headline? Hip hop whore names names. And guess who they're talking about? Karen Steffens. It almost hurts me to my heart that the mainstream media is calling her a hip hop whore because I like that to be reserved for us here at the experience. But the New York Post has an article Hip hop whore oh. names names. Give me my music. Come on, I'll just read it the way the Post has it written. All right, here we go. Usher, Jay-Z, Chris Rock. Not Chris Rock. Ja Rule, Ice-T, Vin Diesel, and other stars of hip-hop and movies who have had run-ins with Karen Steffens may want to call their lawyers and their spin doctors. Superhead, that's oh. what I like to call her. The legendary hip-hop groupie video vixen wannabe actress who goes by the name Superhead. Damn, they are slicing her apart. The white media got you, bitch. <laughs> they got you now. You done crossed over. And they giving it to you worse than the experience. How do you like it better, from a black woman and from a white man? Because you're getting it from both ends now. For some reason, I just thought it was better, you know, just... You know, us being over here and being all ghetto talking about Superhead. All of a sudden, it's in the white media. I think even I'm getting offended because this is written by a white man calling you what you've created for yourself. But for some reason, when it stays in the community, it's okay. <laughs> uh-uh, but not in a mainstream news mess. Let me read it again. They get in you head. <laughs> Steffens, the legendary hip-hop... And listen, white man breaks it down. He says, <laughs> Steffens, the legendary hip-hop groupie video vixen wannabe actress who goes by the name Superhead, just signed a lucrative deal with HarperCollins imprint 
Armistead Books to tell all, and we mean all, said Publishing Insights. The source adds, the memoir is described as a tell-all, but also a cautionary tale for young women who think that life in entertainment world is all full of roses and no thorns. There is a juicy dish on a number of multi-platinum and box office uh, blockbuster celebrities, including never-before-revealed tidbits about Superhead's escapades with some of hip-hop and Hollywood's leading men. Okay. Tell us something that we don't already have. Superhead will detail a five-day sex romp with a hugely successful raspy voice rap actor not long after her arrival in Los Angeles in 2000. Her much-cherished time spent with actor Ice-T, whom she considers a mentor and credits her mm -hmm, for rescuing her and her son from an abusive relationship, yada, 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 so on and so forth. Super damn hated. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Shaq's not mentioned in this, but I'm sure he'll be talked about in the book. Mm. 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 <laughs> Carmen, all of a sudden, your book doesn't even seem like something worth reading. <laughs> Carmen, Nas Baby's mom, her tell-all. You're only talking about one rapper. <laughs> She's talking about the whole gamut. <laughs> That's a lot of banging for your buck. <sighs> Oh, man. You know, that same weekend I'm supposed to be down south. I, I come quickly from First Fridays over at the uh, South Trust building in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. And I go immediately to Maryland, where my radio station um, in Philadelphia, Power 99, we're having our big banging ski weekend. Wow. Who's performing? Cassidy. The problem. Philly's number one problem. Oh, my gosh. Hosted by the Hot Boys. I'm going to be in there. It's going to be fun. Taking this show on the road. All right, everybody, keep it here. It's a blowout hour of gossip next. Call your friends. Wendy, man. I've been with this guy for like five years, and I know you say don't cheat. I know, but I can't help it. I want to. Do you have intention on getting married? We're married. Oh, my God. The Wendy Williams.